So one of the things I always find amazing about Power Rangers is how cool their parents and grandparents are when they just run off in the middle of helping them with stuff. Hi guys, my name is Maria Park and this is Approach to Nerd. And in this episode, we are reviewing Power Rangers Dino Fury, episode six entitled Superstition Strikes. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth, guys. This was not my favorite episode. Um, there were elements of it that kind of felt rushed and they actually felt kind of boring at times, but you know, it is what it is. I, I did get a lot of um, closure and some of the thoughts that I had in my head about how characters feel about each other. Like in this episode, I think Ollie said, I'm coming for you, Amelia. I'm coming, Amelia. I'm gonna help you, Amelia, Amelia like a lot of times. <laughs> so that is basically set in stone for me who the couple of this, you know, entire series is going to be. It's going to be Ollie and Amelia. Um, so the episode starts with Mucus wanting to do something, wanting to know what's behind this door. Um, she gets to, or Mucus gets to the door and Void Knight comes out and Void Knight's like kind of walking and Mucus is like, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite? You know, it's basically being annoying. And then asks what's behind the door and Void Knight's like, well, go, if you want to know what's behind the door, go look. And I'm like, no, that's, that, that's a setup. <laughs> no, that's a setup. And of course, Mucus goes and gets electrocuted. <laughs> so I'm like, this kind of rolls with it. Um, and then Void Knight's is like, go destroy the Rangers before I destroy you, which we know is something that Void Knight says a lot because they never destroy the Rangers. So at this point, it's a lost cause. Um, but, you know, they do. So the ranger line, I love the ranger line, gets, you know, a tip. Um, all these people are like running for their lives. And like this guy's like calling saying, oh, there's a monster attacking. And so, of course, the Power Rangers teleport again, unmorphed in civilian clothing. I don't ever want to hear Zato or anybody else say, you can't tell anybody you're a ranger. Everybody should know at this point. This literally, this, this entire season deals with social media and technology. No, mm -mm. I call BS. Do they not have CCTV cameras everywhere? No, I am not buying this anymore. They never teleport morph. They always teleport unmorph. Cause yeah, granted the morph is very cool. It is a cool morph. It's probably one of the better morphs or probably the best at this point I've ever seen in a Power Ranger series, but come on guys, come on. If you really am trying to, if you're trying to stay incognito, I mean, why would you show up in civilian form and then morph on the scene? That would be like, you know, Batwoman showing up and saying, okay, let me put on my cowl and my suit right here in front of you guys. It's on. No. Plus there wouldn't be a cool morph, but still, no, that is not what we do people. No. So I have, I have concluded that they're not trying to keep themselves. They're not trying to keep their identity you know, secret at all. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but the Rangers, they go, and then there's like this big like bubble monster. And it turns out to be Pop Pop, who is Amelia's handyman grandfather. At first, I didn't get it because they kept saying, oh, this is Pop Pop. And it wasn't until he said, and I used to clean her room. I'm like, okay, all right. So this must be some kind of grandparent, you know, because it wasn't easily established at the beginning. But so Amelia and her friends are going to help him clean these like windows that are really high up and I was amazed at how many times they kept leaving him because of the Power Ranger hotline you know going off and I'm just like this guy is really understanding because the, the way I'm looking at this is he's on the clock this is a job and they keep leaving him <laughs> and I'm like and he's so cool with it he's like oh you guys are gonna go get to the new frozen yogurt shop or whatever and do this new dance craze and they're like yeah and I'm like <laughs> I'm like Power Rangers should never help or offer to help people do anything off the clock because they know they can't carry through. You know, it's the same thing I said about Superman and Lois. Why in the heck is Clark Kent running around as assistant coach? You guys don't have time like that. That's not your life. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, so no, but whatever. So the premise of this story though, basically is Amelia thinks that she is cursed with bad luck because she walked under a ladder. And her pop pop is just as superstitious and paranoid as she is. So now I see where she gets it. She gets it honestly from him. <laughs> this is a genetic thing. Now, as somebody who had a British mother, my mother was born and raised in Scotland. She was like this. We couldn't have our umbrella up in the house. We couldn't have our you know, shoes on the table, throw salt over your, you know, your shoulder. It's just all of this stuff. Um, 
I was raised with, but I tried very hard not to really get sucked into it because it will make you neurotic. And Amelia to me is a very neurotic character. Um, and she's based off of two characters in Rural Soldier that are merged together. So it makes sense. But anyway, so she starts having very bad luck. Um, she rips her sweater. Um, she basically, um, there's a spore beast that like literally hatches in front of her. She has her morpher not only damaged, but stolen. She accidentally takes out um, both Javier and Izzy when she tries to deflect like um, one of the attacks coming from Smashstone, who is the monster that hashed and accidentally directs it towards them and almost takes them out completely. Um, she just really feels like she has bad luck. Um, again, back to the whole thing with Ollie though. First person to react to Amelia being on the ground. I'm coming, Amelia. I'm like, yeah, there's, they're making that so obvious. Um, so she, once her morpher is stolen, you know, of course, you know, they're like, well, what, I think Izzy was the one that said, what can you do? What can they do with your stolen morpher? And she's like, nothing, it's busted. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> why would you think they could do nothing with the morpher they went they basically stole from you they literally took the time to take from you obviously they plan on doing something it's not to put in their trophy case it's they're not collecting them like i do sentai toys which by the way i cannot wait to do an unboxing soon when i get all my stuff in from japan because that's gonna be awesome um no bull crap so yeah as far as our rangers are concerned like man you know, Zoid Knight and them don't have the technology to really fix a, a morpher. I mean, yeah, they have the technology to build these, you know, all these intricate weapons and, you know, these Sporax beasts and be able to make them grow, but they, they definitely can't do anything with that morpher. So Solon is going to basically make a new morpher for Amelia. And Amelia has um, Zato take her back to the command center and, you know, in order to stay out of the team's way because she feels like she's bad luck and she'll just get them hurt or worse. And she doesn't want to help make the morpher because she feels like, you know, she'll just jinx it. It doesn't help. And so I was like, this is the last microchip, you know, we have. If this gets damaged, then we can't, you know, make another morpher. And I'm like, well, that's foreboding as hell. Because what if somebody else make, you know, damages their morpher? You know, what are they going to do? So that's actually not good, actually, in the long term. If you really think about that in the long term of this plot in this series, that being the last ever. Yeah, that's a mess. I think they should probably be a little bit more concerned about that. So now the plan is to fix the morpher and allow Boom Tower to use it to infiltrate the base and get the rest of the Sporox piece. And it happens, but Amelia just happens to be there. Even though there was this whole like really cute scene with someone trying to say, oh, you know, luck is what you make it. You know, basically you're bringing this bad luck on yourself because you believe it's bad luck. And then Amelia was able to morph and take on Boom Tower and teleport him back to where the others were. And then they all start fighting. So Ollie, of course, is helping Amelia. And then the other three are fighting um, the other beast, their um, um, Smash Stone. And of course, they have to call on the Megazord. Long story short, they're able to defeat him, especially with the hammer attack. And, you know, it's, it's great. And then we have this moment where we have like a whole... Um, kind of Ben and Betty and like Bulk and Skull and every other ridiculous, you know, side character that, that gets like pretty much they do something and something ridiculous happens to them because Ollie was like talking to Amelia and Amelia was like, you know, I basically, I have good luck now. I just, cause I was being so negative. I basically created my own luck and Ollie's like, this is the first time I agree with you. And then he actually accidentally smashes a mirror and he's like, you know, they're like, that's seven years bad luck. And then he just starts having immediately bad luck. The, you know, the bucket falls on his head. You know, he ends up falling into the, like this baby carriage wrapped in like ropes or whatever, or like hoses and then goes flying down the street. And I'm like, I get what they were doing with that, but it was silly. Um, and then of course, you know, Millie gets the last comment saying, well, you can say what you want, but you can't say it's bad luck. <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> but there were so many questions I had like why did they think that they weren't going to do anything with the morpher why would they believe that why were they not more concerned about this fact um also why was Amelia makes a comment that her pop pop taught her to swing a sledgehammer at seven and I'm like why would you teach a seven why would you give a seven-year-old as a mother of an almost 25 year old daughter 
it was not even in my realm of, of possibilities to give my child a sledgehammer or any weapon of any nature because she's seven and I don't want to die. So I don't understand why that was a thing. Um, I don't know. There's just a lot. And what really is in that room that Void Knight doesn't want them to know about? What's he doing in there? So yeah, there's lots of questions that I have. But the one question I'm giving completely up on is why the Rangers cannot get it through their heads that they do not need to be teleporting when the Ranger line is called in civilian form if you're supposed to keep your identity a secret. So yeah. I think this would have been a lot better of an episode if we were looking for our last Megazord um, because we still don't have Blacks. So I think that's the next episode we're going to get. This is kind of like a filler, which honestly, I feel like this could have been done after we got the last one because we already got green. We should have got Blacks and then done this because this kind of was like a filler episode to me. I like Amelia as a character. She's adorable, but it just, it, it really wasn't that interesting. I mean, honestly her bad luck thing. It was like, okay. I mean, that could literally, even as he's like, this could happen to literally anybody. It's law of averages. If something goes wrong and you're having a crap day, it's going to roll like dominoes. So like, it's not because you went under the ladder, but again, the character's paranoid. So I get it. It's just kind of sad because they make her a ghost hunter. They make her believe in the supernatural, but they also give her elements where they make it seem like she's just crazy and neurotic. <laughs> and that's kind of sad. Um, but another highlight Love the morph, even though she wasn't in it. Love the morph. Always love the morph scene. I don't know what it is. Love the morph scene. Hate, hate, hate the theme song. I will keep saying it, guys. I don't understand how they can have such a cool morph, and I like the music, but that same riff of the music in the beginning, that whole auto-tune, it just, it just bothers me. It is very bad. I do not like it at all. Um, but hey, that's just me. Um, I liked um, the whole interaction with um, Mucus and Smashstone where Smashstone was like, did you just hit me? And she's like, no, I just patted you. And he's like, well, let me return the favor. And it's just, it really shows you that in monsters, they all don't get along. I mean, of course we've seen this in the past, but they are very bitchy in these, in this series. I don't know what it is, but they're just very, very bitchy. Um, but yeah. And then back to my point with Pop Pop. I mean, this man, this older man, elderly man needs help cleaning these, these windows that are really high up. You offer to help him because you see he needs help. And then, of course, your rangers, you have to keep abandoning him. And he's just, he just rolls with it. I don't get that. I mean, I know what kind of parent I am. I mean, if my daughter had been like, mom, I'm going to be off for like a little while. I'm like, hey, you are. And I'm like, now are you living in my house? Where are you going? Who, who you with? Give me the numbers. I mean, the, it almost feels like in the Power Ranger lore, the parents, the grandparents, they don't give a damn about their kids. It's like, is that why they were really recruited? They were recruited because their family just doesn't care if they go missing. <laughs> because it just feels weird. The only times we don't see that being a problem is shows where they, the family knows. Like, of course, Power Ranger Samurai, all the parents knew because they were retainers, basically, or the American version of retainers, or Lightspeed Rescue. Heck, the Pink Ranger and um, Titanium, New Ranger, their father was pretty much the boss. So everybody knew about that. But like, when you don't have shows like this, and you just have or those series with those types of plots and you just have these kids who, you know, with the green and black Rangers specifically, you know, their, their father seems to be very micromanaged material. He's a micromanager. So you would think he would want to know where his children is or are at all times. And it just seems out of character. That they're able to just like roll. And what is Izzy going to do? She's in high school. What is she going to do when she gets to the Ranger hotline and she's in the middle of her algebra test? I mean, it's just stuff like that. I really wish they they thought about stuff like that when they wrote these shows. I know they're for kids. They're suspending your disbelief. But sometimes I feel like there should be a little bit, just a tiny bit of exposition and backstory and thought and you know into the plot before you put these shows out. But that's just me nitpicking because you know it's what you do on a review site. You nitpick the little stuff. I've been nitpicking this for years. Um, one of the biggest gripes I've ever had was Power Rangers in space. These were high schoolers that were out on a spaceship and not attending classes. How in the heck did they graduate? How did their parents not get on their cases for dropping and skipping school all the time? I don't know because their parents didn't know they were Rangers. So I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, they just don't care. <laughs> I'm like the parents don't care. That is what that is a prerequisite to being a Power Ranger, guys. Your parents have a very helicopter hands-off approach in your life. And that is why you get you know, chosen. 
not for being brave. It's not for having a DNA that matches a morpher. It's not any of this other stuff. It's not having like being in the morphing master secret, you know, society or a secret handshake club. It's because your family don't give a crap about you. That is literally it. <laughs> I stand by that. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that is my review for this week's episode. Let me know what you think. If you have any theories, comments, questions, rants, concerns, leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you would like to send it for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next in the nerd battle, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.